Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome to Phantom Frequency. This is where we get into the entire multiverse of pop culture, if you will, whether that's comic book movies, whether that's, you know, albums of any genre, TV shows, anime. We talk about it here. So if you dig the vibe, make sure you click the buttons below the video and show that love and support for the channel. We appreciate each and every one of your new subscribers coming in recently. We just got over 420 or something like that. And we're trying to get to that uh, 500 goal. So make sure you become a part of the community today. And thank you so much for everyone that just simply clicked on the video. You know what I'm saying? And today we're going to be getting into one of the most anticipated series of the year, my most anticipated series of the year. And potentially, depending on how the rest of this season goes, might be just, might be my favorite TV show of the year. Step over, Shogun. No, I was playing. I haven't even finished that. But it's Penguin Episode 2, baby. Penguin Episode 2. And let me tell you, this episode was chock full of just fantastic moments that had me on the edge of my seat, man. And just getting my overall thoughts out the way in the beginning here. Phenomenal episode once again. This one might even be better than the first episode because uh, we pick up, you know, with Oz. Uh, where we pick up actually with uh, Sophia Falcone going through this crazy dream sequence, which I definitely could tell pretty straight away it was. But at first I thought it was going to be a flashback to her days in Arkham. And I do think they're going to be fleshing this out throughout the series because it almost feels like she's the co-lead of the show in a certain sense because she gets a lot of focus in this episode, which it, to me is not a bad thing because we already get a very good sense of who Oswald is as a character and they take plenty of time to develop his character, move the plot forward in regards to what he's doing and continue um, just keeping that consistency of the character and just seeing the psychology at work and seeing the way that Oswald is always able or Oz, as we should say, is always able to get himself out of these situations and, He's getting his life threatened several times in this season. Damn near gets stabbed to death and barely is able to have enough dirt and have enough leverage to get himself out of the situation. And he even refers that to Vic later in that scene where he makes him lay down with the dead bodies that he just caught throughout the episode, all because Victor kind of fucking up some of the plans they were trying to do in order to frame uh, that uh, VD over there. So that way he could take the fall for working with the uh, Maronis and double crossing the Falcons and fucking penguins playing a dangerous game, bro. And my heart is just beating fast as hell watching him maneuver through these situations and trying to figure out where he's going to go next. And Sophia is just like a guard dog, man. She's sniffing out a rat and she is on it even behind her uncle's back. Who's now taking over um, the organization and taking over the family business, which would be uh Carmine Falcone's brother. That is. So uh, they're trying to kind of push her out of the way and have him take control of it. Well, we're, Kind of technically, it should be her or her and her brother were going to kind of run it together. And that's another aspect of it that kind of pisses her off as well is that whoever whoever did this murder, which we all know is Oz, but to her, whoever did this murder kind of fucked up her plans and took another family member away from her to the point to where no mother, no father, no brother. She's literally the only one of her like more immediate familial bloodline other than her cousins and uncles and whatnot. So it is very interesting to see the psychology of this character at play, because like we saw with the opening scene. Shit gets intense, and her brain is fucked up, so I totally get the Arkham thing now. It ain't just the crazy eyes on this episode, but you definitely see her putting on the crazy eyes every couple times throughout the season when she's about to shoot the dude that fucking Oz frames for killing the uh, for killing the guy they got from the Maroney family in order to snitch out the actual rat who's Oz. And then, yeah, so shit gets crazy, man. Shit just, it just continuously ratchets up the tension. You get a little bit of, uh, you know, and then we flesh it out more of Oz's character with his mother and whatnot, getting more of a sense of the illness that she's dealing with and some of those things where she has a very big, or Oz has a very big vulnerability due to her health condition as well and wants to keep her kind of off the grid and don't have her in too much of a public place to where someone could potentially get to him through the work that he's doing. So you kind of just see all these wheels turning in Oz's head throughout the, the um, throughout the entire episode and just throughout this series in general. And yeah, so Christina Milioti is damn near stealing the show from Colin Farrell at this point, which to me is shocking as hell in and of itself because I already expected him to kill it. But she has just been a breath of fresh air into the season. But like I said, I ain't throwing no shade on Colin Farrell because his performance is phenomenal. And I don't even think it's him until I have to think about this review. Every time I watch it, I forget about it every time. And then I, I sit down and start putting together stuff and looking through the cast list and all that. And then I start remembering, like, shit, it's Colin Farrell. Goddamn. So, yeah, man. But overall, absolutely love this episode. And as we kind of recap some of the big plot points here and some of the things that were interesting to me that stuck out the most was, like I mentioned, that opening scene with Sophia Falcone actually going to her therapist 
um, uh, under the name of Julian Ross. And a lot of people are speculating online that Theo Rossi's character of this therapist that seems to be associated with or maybe potentially working inside of Arkham could be their version of Hugo Strange in this more Batman universe, which I do think you could use the name. You know, there is Stephen Strange. You could, you know, but anyway, but people are speculating that. And I could see this character kind of being a conduit to kind of be a version of that. But we'll have to wait and see. But she has this crazy dream sequence of someone coming up behind her when she's visiting or her brother's visiting her in Arkham, um, you know, uh, through the visitor window. And someone just comes up and shoots him on his side in the back. And then she just has to sit there and watch it. And she's all chained up in the Arkham getup and whatnot. And then she sees this flashing light th that comes up that's going back and forth. And that's because that's some kind of like hypnotizing, you know, therapy type of things where it's trying to pull out whatever the hell is really traumatizing her what's really um fucking with her mentally and emotionally you know what i'm saying the baggage that she's carrying with her what it's actually caused by and that's kind of the whole purpose behind this uh this whole experiment or whatever you or this whole treatment whatever you want to say I, whatever however you, however you want to say it but i just loved the acting of the scene where it was just like no dialogue really just her like all out of sorts and everything and the way she like wakes up and she's like all freaked out and he has to literally like hold her in color color cuddle her and just try to get her to calm down and it was just phenomenal performance once again and theo rossi coming up in here i didn't expect to see him either i didn't hear anything about it so that was a cool little pleasant surprise pleasant surprise he plays really good supporting characters i really liked him in um luke cage over there on netflix that was really cool and then we see oz doing his thing going over to talk to the maroney family in uh prison once again and then you got the lady that's kind of enforcing that uh organization outside uh, which I think might be uh, Sal Maroney's wife, I'm thinking. Um, and so you see Clancy Brown once again as Sal Maroney, which is also another brilliant casting choice in the show. And you see Oz like, okay, man, well, yep, we got everything set up. We're going to let you guys get these drops and everything. We're about to move this shit, so let's run it. And they're like, all right, bro, like, why do we know we need – why should we even trust you, bro? Like, like, you know, you're kind of a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, come on, dude. Like, I got you this far. I can get you the shit. Trust me. I don't like these motherfuckers. I didn't start this shit on the family to do it like that. I'm trying to make dissension so you guys can take over, you know, where in actuality he's creating chaos and having them both go at each other so they can take each other out in the meantime, until he can finally make his move and fully become the leader of everything and be the, the fucking kingpin of Gotham, essentially, you know what I'm saying? And that was the whole crazy thing to me was just watching Oz's mind work throughout the episode and seeing him formulate this plan to get the jewels in order to frame VD, and they're going to have to plan it in his car and everything like that. And the whole way that that just blows up in their face, though, because Victor chokes up and gets scared and doesn't necessarily get in there sneaky enough to where he gets caught up by um, um, by the Falcon security and all that shit and gets chased out of there. He calls Oz after Oz gets called over to his mother's house, and he's trying to deal with his mother's dementia which is something they just revealed in this episode as well. So that's a whole nother issue Oz has to try to deal with. And the landlord's like, hey, man, like she needs like 24-7 like care, you know? But he's like, hey, shut the fuck up. Just be the landlord. Here's some extra money. Just look after her. I, I trust you, bro. Don't don't fuck up. Because he kind of knows what's going on. He kind of gets the deal. And I think um might have like more of a personal connection to Oz. So he kind of knows there's a uh, – he, he's kind of on the good side with him and knows that this is a – he won't bring the crime to him or hurt this guy as long as the guy looks over his mother and whatnot and generally doesn't seem to bring the action there. So I really dug that scene as well. And like I said, just does it even more to continuously flesh out Oz as a character and just to see his mother and, the, and his relationship with her and the things that he's dealing with on an even more deeper personal level level and with all the health concerns and things like that makes you wonder, is she going to end up, you know, passing away before the end of the season? Is something going to happen to her at some point? You know, that would just be tragic because he's already lost his brother's as he alluded to in this conversation with Sophia Falcone when they're at um, when they're at her brother's funeral. And he brings up the whole backstory and all that about his brothers and when they passed away, how his mother was just devastated and completely out of sorts, wasn't going to work, wasn't leaving the house, and just completely like fell apart as a person. And he tried his best to try to pick her up again. And then randomly one night, she gets in the mood to go out and takes him to this jazz club. First time he's ever seen live music. They dance the night away and all this stuff. And he fully... Uh, and that fully influenced and changed him as a person as well and kind of got her back on her feet and just trying to let Sophia know that she shouldn't let this uh, grieve, this grief really hold her down and get her too crazy and let it break her spirits and whatnot. And I like this kind of more human side of uh, Oz Cobb, as we should say, 
And I like getting to see that side of him and kind of connecting to Sophia in that way and kind of the way that he sort of empathizes with her situation, even though he's the one that caused it. But also, I think it's all ulterior motives and things that he's trying to pull over a wool. He's trying to pull over their eyes and whatnot. And the working girl that he's seeing, you know, um, in a sense, uh, has like her bring her ladies over and has like a nice little kind of function at his pad and whatnot. And she's not very happy about that and all the things going on because Sophia might be knocking up her door because y'all already know, man, she's out on the hunt. She's like a fucking T-800, bro. Like a T-1000 coming out here about to melt through your motherfucking gate and come and get your ass because she is just everywhere and she is constantly on it. She's going behind her uncle's back to try to figure out who's the rat. Like shit is just getting intense and Oz is barely getting out of the situations. He's getting questioned by the Maronis at one point after they end up taking the shipment of the drops from Oz and them and he ends up, you know, betraying them. Almost gets caught up in the situation and shot by the driver, by the way. Narrowly gets out of there in one piece and then he gets interrogated about it a little bit himself but luckily gets to get away and all that good jazz so it's just this constant game of cat and mouse and just this tightrope of all this shit he's trying to do to pull this off and be able to uh get away with it scot-free and kind of play both sides against each other and just be that judas that's like rotting both sides from the inside out you know what i mean so i just really love the way that they're playing this into the show and the way that they're really letting this all play out and getting to see this uh this back and forth between oz having to like literally kill people and frame people to get killed and literally the the no fucks that he has to give to be able to do that in order to save his own hide but at the same time you understand that you got to save your own ass so it's like this crazy complicated uh game going on i'm just cat and mouse the whole time and now as we see at the end of the episode sophia and oz are going to be teaming up to go against the falcons bro and take them out that's crazy bro he's like triple crossing now i'm like this is insane yo like where is this gonna go now because she's fully and i don't know if she's playing him either that's the whole thing. I think she could be playing a, a, a long game with this guy, making him kind of drop his guard so she can kind of sniff out some more evidence and some more proof of him being the one that did it. Because I still don't think she fully trusts him, and I think she'd be dumb to do that. And I don't think the character's that dumb. So for me personally, I think this makes the show even more crazy because I think they're both playing each other now, and it's just a game of who's going to get caught first with definitive evidence. Who's going to get caught red-handed? And that, to me, is just brilliant writing, just having that dynamic back and forth and being unpredictable, not knowing what's going to happen next and not being able to predict it. And even when you can, something else happens later that's going to completely swerve you in a new way that completely throws it off. So even when things start to get cliche or start to get predictable, they find a way to um, misdirect you and kind of find a way to kind of uh, um, beat expectations in that way. And I really love that about this show so far. So for me, this season has been super dope so far. I am loving the way that Gotham is really a character, the way they're fully fleshing out Oz Cobb in this sense and the Falcons and the Maronis and really fleshing out the, the crime side of Gotham to the point where I'd be totally fine if we don't even see Batman, Bruce Wayne or anything in this show. But y'all let me know about that speculation down below. If you think we're going to see Batman before the end of this thing, let me know what you thought about this latest episode of the penguin. Um, so now they're dropping these on Sunday. So you should be seeing our weekly reviews no later than Mondays now uh, going forward. So Sunday or Monday, you'll be seeing our weekly review for the Penguin for the rest of the season. We got some really cool spooky season stuff literally coming out within 24 hours of this video. So keep your eyes peeled for that goodness and that dopeness as well. And make sure you guys are clicking the buttons and hitting the bell so you see every time the new dopeness is dropped into your feed. Thank you so much for joining us into the very last minute of this episode. I love you. Appreciate you. You have a great, safe week out there. And take care of yourselves. And we'll see you on the next review. Until then, peace.